Hello everybody, I hope you are doing really well and having a lovely day. I am back at the sewing machine today, yay! So exciting. Um, I posted my last sort of chatty sewing vlog a few weeks ago and you guys loved it, you really enjoyed it. Um, so I definitely am planning to do more starting today. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who commented. Lots of people said it was like um, being a social sewing event or a social sewing thing. Lots of people said it was like being in the studio with me and really nice to sort of sew along with my video as well, which was really sweet. So um, I'm going to do more. I posted in my last video and on Instagram asking you guys for some questions that I can answer whilst I'm doing this because... Um, I'm not the chattiest person in the world, so I do find it quite hard to think of things to talk about to a camera, essentially, without somebody the other side of it asking me questions. So, to make it a bit easier for myself and hopefully a bit more interesting for you, I've asked for some questions. So, um, give me more questions for the next one. I'll hopefully do one a month maybe one every couple of months um, so post your questions below for what kind of things you want to ask me it can be anything um, so questions about I don't know cooking books movies other crafts whatever you fancy asking me so some questions I might not answer so but I'm pretty certain you guys will ask nice questions anyway anyway moving on so uh, today I am sewing the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern, the indigo smock, smock dress. And I am using this gorgeous gingham floral stretch crepe that went into my September sew and tell boxes. Um, so, welcome by the way, if you're new here, I should do an introduction. I don't do introductions very often. I'm Hayley from Sew Hayley Jane and I run a sewing subscription box company. So every month I send boxes of beautiful fabrics and inspiration and a little magazine. I've got them up here. You can just about see some over here. Um, so that's what I do. And so this was the fabric in the classic and mini boxes. Um, and I have decided to get it stitched up myself because I love it it's gorgeous it's a stretch crepe um which is really slippery to cut out i cut it last night and it's it's slippery so <laughs> the edges of my seams are not nice and straight but that's okay so the indigo smock there are a couple of different options there's a sort of top option there's a dress option there's flounce sleeves there's bracelet sleeves and you can add a frill as well so I'm going for the dress version without the frill with the flouncy sleeves. Since doing a Maya Sotis dress a couple of weeks ago, I am loving the idea of flouncy sleeves now. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm really happy to find out that Tilly and the Buttons have extended their sizes, which is great. So they now go up to a Tilly and the Buttons size 10 which is a UK size 24, US 20, Europe size 52. Um, so the hip size, the biggest hip size they do now is a 51 inch, which is still slightly smaller than my hips. Mine are about 53 inches. Um, but actually this dress isn't, is, is very floaty. There's a lot of ease. So I've made it to fit my bust slash high bust. Um, so I've cut out a straight size 7, which is a UK size 18, um, but have done something that I do quite often with um, dresses like this is I have lengthened the bodice um, because I'm quite busty. So I do find if I don't lengthen bodices on these kind of dresses, they end up being very empire line. And I look like I should be in Pride and Prejudice or something like that. Um, so I've cut a straight size 7, um, also because the fabric is slightly stretchy so although it's very loose fitting and I think there's not going to be any problem anyway even if there is the fabric is slight it has a little bit of stretch to it which is going to make it more comfortable so that's the only alterations I've done I've also done I don't really know if this counts as a hack but I have also cut a couple of thin 
ties to stitch into the waist seam just to bring it in a little bit at the waist for a bit more shaping because as you can see it's a very loose fitting around the waist which is great and I love that kind of style but because I'm very busty and I'm very hippy if I wear something that is loose fitting around the waist I just lose any shape that I have it's all disappeared <laughs> I look like I'm wearing a duvet so these kind of things I have started adding some little tie waist straps just to bring it in to show that I do have some curves. There is a waist there somewhere. Um, so yes, that's what I'm doing. Um, I don't think there's anything else to tell you. I have, of course, got a cup of tea and I am using from Experimental Space. So these were in the goodie bags at the sewing weekender that I went to, but also um, Andrea's pattern, the Casey sweater, went into the luxury boxes that I just said, and she also sent me a few of these. So some of the boxes, not all of them, some of the boxes have got one of these. And there's a little coaster that says time for little creativity on one side and gin and bear it on the other side. So obviously it's creativity. So I've got my tea. Always have a cup of tea with me. And I am not into herbal teas or green teas or... I don't mind coffee, I'll have a latte or a cappuccino, but I don't like flavours in them. I'm just straight tea or straight coffee. I've also got with me, which went into the boxes this month, it's a bit tricky to see, but it is my new seamstress gauge from Rocking Stitch, so I'm very excited to give that a whirl. I've also got my little stock scissors, which went into the boxes last last summer um, from Cloudcraft. They're snipster scissors from Cloudcraft, and they're really lovely, very handy to have nearby. So, I think that's it. I'm going to get stitching. I've got questions that you guys have answered, some on YouTube and some on Instagram, so I'll get those up. Um, I've already done, because I, it's been one of those mornings where things... I was hoping to get to the studio and get sewing right away. Didn't have enough fabric when I cut the pattern out last night, so I had to wash an extra bit of fabric just for one skirt piece um, and get that washed and dried this morning and then cut that out this morning. Then I've done all the like interfacing pieces already um, and then when I went to get the iron out, I dropped it and the plug broke so I've popped home to get my iron from home to bring that back and I've also realised I've left my camera battery charger so I've only got one battery so I'm hoping that's going to last me. I might be sort of switching off during bits where there's you know sewing and things like that. Not through sewing, you know what I mean. It takes a long time to sew a project and you aren't going to have a four hour video here. <laughs> I'm going to hopefully condense it to maybe half an hour. So I don't need to film every single bit of it. Anyway, right, the first thing. So I've already stay stitched the neckline and done the bust darts. So my first bit to do is to show, sew the shoulder seams. So the facing seams and finish the edges of the facing and then attach that. So that's what I'm going to do first. I love Tilly's instructions, by the way. Aren't they great? They're so clear. I love that there's a picture for every part of the instructions. Um, uh, I'm going to be finishing my seams with my overlocker today because it's quick and easy. My, uh, if I'm at home and I'm sewing, I don't have my overlocker at home. So I tend to do French seams at home. So, right. Let's get sewing. Let me know. If you are sewing along whilst watching this video, what are you making at the moment? This fabric's really hard to tell the right side from the wrong side. There is a very slight difference in the brightness of the flowers, which just about shows you what the right side or the wrong side is so hopefully I don't go wrong there. The first question is from Mary G on YouTube and says greetings from Michigan USA hello um, enjoying all your videos but the chatty ones are my favorite do you sew for your daughter or family any home sewing home decoration sewing and are you making any of your Christmas gifts or decor this year for family and friends we're not talking about Christmas already are we oh my gosh Okay, so, do I sew for my daughter or family? I have done, I have, I've made Andy a jumper for Christmas a couple years ago. 
uh, and I have made Mia a couple of pairs of trousers or leggings um, but at the moment I don't do much sewing for her she's so little and growing so much I'm really reluctant to sew her anything that she's going to grow out of so quickly at the moment um, and also I am I don't like the phrase but I am a selfish sewist I enjoy sewing because I enjoy wearing the clothes that I make and um, making clothes that fit me and my body is, is why I started sewing really you know things don't fit me in the shops very well so that's why I enjoy sewing I enjoy sewing for myself not always sometimes it all goes a bit wrong obviously um, but I am excited as Mia gets older to make her like dressing up clothes and things like that that's quite exciting in terms of home decor I've made a few cushions um, and bunting um, and I've made things like some wax wraps for um, covering food <sighs> oh and some napkins I've made some napkins as well um, but I haven't done that much home decor sewing my passion is dressmaking so um, I mostly I don't have as much time to sew as I would like to obviously nobody ever does um, so because of limitations in time I tend to only sort of do dressmaking but I would saying that I would really love to use obviously I have a massive collection of fat quarters they're so pretty I love them so much um, and I would really love to make um, in the last issue of Love Sew magazine there was a tutorial for like a, a stool like a floor poof stool thing um, which I would really love to do I've seen one on closet case as well um, and they used all their fabric scraps to stuff it which I think is a brilliant idea um, and I also think I, maybe this is a bit weird but I also think if I was to make something like that and stuff it with all my fabric scraps one day in years to come my great great granddaughter might open it up and pull out all the bits of fabric and it'll be like a history of great grandma do you know what I mean? does that sound weird? <laughs> um, right I'm just going to stitch this seam uh, in terms of Christmas gift sewing Honestly, I have not even thought about it yet. <laughs> it is the middle of September. I really should start thinking about it. Um, I actually, if, if I'm doing homemade Christmas gifts, I prefer to do edible homemade Christmas gifts, actually. Um, my family are quite big on their jams and their chutneys and their preserves and things like that so I quite enjoyed that kind of thing I would love to make um, some festive pajamas for the family it's Mia's gonna be nearly two so obviously last year she had absolutely no idea what was going on this year I doubt she'll have much of a clue of what's going on but it will be more exciting so I'm, ex I'm excited about that uh, right so I have joined the neckline facing pieces I've added some interfacing and finished the outside edge so now I've got to attach that to the bodice so oh I am super excited by the way today I am off with my mum and my sister to go and see the new Downton Abbey movie tonight <laughs> I have been waiting so long for this I am a huge Downton fan so I'm very excited we're gonna have dinner first as well it was my sister's 30th birthday last week, so that was my gift to her. <laughs> so that's what we're doing tonight. Okay, Maureen on YouTube says, How did you come up with your idea for the sewing subscription boxes? Also, did you factor in how you would deal with the expansion of your business? Ooh. Okay, so the idea for the boxes themselves came from so I'd really gotten into sewing recently um, and I had a conversation with my husband in the car about how much I would love to open my own fabric shop 
um, because I live in Hampshire and really there's there's not a lot in Hampshire to rival some of the fabric shops that we've got in London and Birmingham and in the bigger cities so I was feeling a little bit jealous and doing most of my shopping online um, and so I had yeah I had this conversation with my husband we'd been subscribed to one of those fruit and veg boxes um, so my husband said could you do a subscription for fabric and at first I was like no that would never work but then the more I thought about it the more I thought that was a great idea um, and I was kind of not enjoying where I was working at the time so much at that point anyway so I knew it was time to think about something else and to move on um, so yeah that's where the idea came from so I was in a really lucky position at the time that I was able to quit my job uh, my husband was able to support us for a little while um, so I could really give So Hayley Jane my all um, which meant it did grow quite quickly so within a year I'd sort of outgrown the fact that I was working doing it all from home I also became pregnant with Mia um, and just knew from the previous year that trying to do the subscription boxes with a baby in the house was just never ever going to work um, so my husband runs his own business as well um, so we were by that point we were then in a position to be able to move both the businesses out of the house and share the rent on a studio workshop type, type space um, so that works really nicely Andy has the office upstairs um, and I have the studio space downstairs so that's really handy and in terms of factoring in expansion obviously it was something that I hoped for so although it grew quite quickly it's also been a steady progression which means that we've been able to um, make changes as necessary as the business has grown then I was able to hire a part-time member of staff so Bruna comes in um, and helps me with the packing and I also still rely on my lovely parents and Andy's lovely parents, both of our mums help with childcare as well as helping with the box packing once a month as well. Um, so that's really handy. Um, so yeah, the growth sort of is happening, um, not slowly, but it's progressing in a way that means we can move with it and grow with it. So we're just going to see, see where it takes us. Um, and where that goes but it's very exciting I hope that's answered the question <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Noelia that's a pretty name I hope I've said that right it says how did you come up with the theme how do you come up with the themes and how far in advance do you plan the boxes so I'm going to get this bit sewn and then I'll do the clipping and I can talk you through that Okay, so, yes, how do I come up with the themes and how far in advance do I plan the boxes? So, the themes come from all sorts of places. It could be a fabric that I've seen that I just really want to include in the boxes, usually because I want it myself, like, really badly as well, so I try to think of a theme that it could work for. Um, it could be... Um, a particular time of year so um, Christmas obviously or I did a theme around um, sort of wedding season it was when it was Harry and Meghan's royal wedding last year I did a box around um, wedding season so you know making an outfit that you might wear as a guest to a wedding it could be a particular product that I've seen so an example of that would be the latest box was um, the Sew and Tell box and I really wanted to include the seamstress gauge from Rocking Stitch so I created a theme around that to be able to use that. 
Um, so yeah, inspiration comes from all sorts of places. How far in advance do I plan them? I try to have a rough idea of about three months, if not more, but I can't plan too far in advance because, or I can't sort of be really stuck on that idea um, because sometimes I then get to that month and the fabric or the product that I wanted isn't available in the quantities that I need. So obviously most fabric shops will buy one or two rolls or bolts of a particular fabric and that's it. Whereas I buy uh, 300 plus meters of just one type of fabric. So it's, there's, it's quite hard to fulfill. So sometimes I then have to think of my feet or find an alternative. Um, so yeah, I, I have an idea. So I've got the next, I'd say four months ideas not completely planned but I've got the ideas of what I want for the next four months I'd say um, yes so right I need to what do I need to do clip the curves and then press the facing and seam allowances out so I've oh let me show you I've attached the facing so I now need to and um, trim the seam allowance so I now need to clip the curves. So next question. This is nice. I like this. Um, what was your career before you started So Haley Jane? Oh, okay. So a few things. I studied at, at university to become a teacher. I really wanted to be a primary school teacher working in the early years. So with sort of four and five year olds. <coughs> Um, throughout sort of school and college I always worked in uh, either as a babysitter or a nanny or um, I worked in a creche. I also worked as a face painter at Marwell Zoo for a couple of summers and Christmases. That was fun. Um, so I did a lot of work with the children. Um, then I got to, so I was so set on the idea of being a teacher that I didn't even do a degree and then a PGCE, which is probably the more common way of getting into teaching. I went straight for a teaching degree at Winchester University, um, where you do placements every year and things like that. And I got to, so it was a four year course, and I got to my third year teaching practice and realised it really wasn't for me. I loved working with children. I think because as well I went straight from school to college to university. So I was 21 and trying to teach a class of 30 children, five-year-olds. I don't think I had it in me. <laughs> I don't think I was ready for that kind of responsibility for a start. Um, uh, but I loved the sort of creative side of working with children and things like that. So... Throughout university, I'd been working in an after-school club and a breakfast club. Um, and she had recently, the manager there had recently opened her own preschool. So I I was really lucky. The university that I went to, um, when I said I didn't want to continue, they said, well, you've already done three years worth of pretty good um, coursework. Why don't you just sort of switch lanes a little bit and you can finish your degree just without the teaching bit so I wouldn't get the qualified teaching status so I've got a degree in early years education um so that yeah then I went and worked um in a preschool uh, and became the deputy manager there um so that was good fun um but then I had so whilst I was there, I'd been working with a child who had special needs and I went through the process of helping to get him um, the, the support that he needed for autism and realised I really enjoyed working with special needs and working, I did a lot of work with the speech and language therapist there. So I then thought, okay, well I don't, I want to progress, I want to do more maybe I'll go back to university and do speech and language therapy as a, a post-grad diploma. Um, but there are very 
few places available. I went for a, a university interview and didn't get in on the basis that I only had experience with children and I needed more experience with adults. So a friend of mine knew of a, a lady who was a speech therapist and had just opened her own day service for adults with learning disabilities and autism. Um, so, oh, before that, so after I had my interview, I knew it wasn't going to be until January that the course started, so I had a bit of time between the summer and Christmas. Um, so I decided to go and work as an au pair in Italy for three months with four-year-old twins, a boy and a girl, which was interesting. That was hard. That was really hard work, but worth it, definitely worth it. Um, and then I found out I didn't get into university. So I set up a volunteer job when I got back from Italy with at this day service for adults with learning disabilities and autism. At the same time, I was also I also had a temporary job as a teaching assistant in a school and working as an after school nanny. So I had about two jobs and a volunteer job at that point. When was this? I was probably 24 at this point. 23, 24, um, and I really enjoyed working in this day service with adults, um, so much so that she then offered me a job, they really liked me as well, so she offered me, um, to start off with, it was a part-time job as a support assistant, um, and gradually that became a full-time job, and I progressed and became a communication coordinator, and then I became the deputy manager of the day service. So yeah, progression there as well. And that's then when So Hayley Jane started, when I started doing more sewing and um, decided that I'd kind of gotten everything that I could out of that job and wanted to move on and do something a bit different, a bit more creative and be my own boss as well. Um, like I said, Andy runs his own business, so I was getting increasingly jealous of leaving for work every morning, and he was sort of just getting up and having a coffee, and obviously that's not what running your own business is all about. There's a lot more hard work to it than that, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do, so that's when I started So Hayley J. Gosh, this is going to be a long video, I think, with all this chatting. And not enough sewing. I need to go and press my facing now. So I will be back in a minute. Right, I have just stopped for lunch and have business chats with Andy. I've got a phone call um, in a bit as well, so we'll have to stop for that too. But I have attached the facing. is all done, looking rather lovely, and done a little couple of stitches in the ditch at the shoulder seams to secure that down. So next up is, I believe my favourite piece, my favourite bit of sewing is the side seams. Is that weird that the side seams, I think it's because that's when it starts to really take shape. So stitch, trim and finish, seam allowances. Yeah, so sewing the side seams now. Okay. So it's looking good. I'm happy with how that's looking. So yes, let's get the side seams done. And next question comes from Anna. If you got me in stitches on YouTube, she asks two questions. What is it about sewing for yourself that you get the most joy out of? And where do you see Sew Haley Jane in five years? So yeah, I really enjoy the process of sewing and having a project. I do get kind of, um, what the word is like itchy fingers if I don't have a project on the go not that I get much time to sew but I do like having something that I'm working towards I'm the same with books I don't like it if I haven't got a book on the go either um, so I love the process I love creating something that's unique and that fits my body um, and I'll be honest it's probably a little bit um, What's the word? I can't think of the word, but when somebody says, oh my gosh, I love what you're wearing, and you can say, well, you don't have to say it. Usually I just go, oh, thanks very much. And then in my head, I'm like, I made it myself. Um, but sometimes if I know the person, I would probably say, thanks, I made it. 
if I don't know the person, I tend to keep quiet because I don't want to brag too much. Is that weird? Maybe I should brag a bit more. Um, so yeah, and making something that that fits me, um, although I don't, at the moment, I haven't done much in the way of fitted sewing, at least not since before I got pregnant with Mia. Um, I tend to prefer to wear things that are slightly looser or that cinch in a bit at the waist, but I can't, I just, I don't feel comfortable in things that are close fitting anyway, so... Um, I just I just like having fun as well, having fun with fabric and fun with fashion and prints and stuff, and you know, try not to care what too much about care too much about what's in fashion, but just what looks good on me, what feels good on me. Sewing is brilliant, and <laughs> and as if that wasn't enough, the the fact that we've got this fantastic social element of sewing as well even if you're not somewhere um, which means you get to go to anything social or you know not many of my I don't know many people from my non-sewing life that sew if that makes sense so all the sort of sewing friends I have are people that I've made because of sewing um, or through running my own business as well um, with other lovely sewing businesses so yeah there is definitely a social thing I love Instagram and seeing what everyone's making and sharing. All of it. All of it's great. Next question, where do I see So Haley Jane in five years? That's a big question. I would love to still be doing what I'm doing. Um, I would love just to keep growing it, really. To keep growing, to be able to um, hire people to come and help me to uh, be able to take more of the financial strain off of Andy to I would I would I still would love to have my own fabric shop um, I think there is space for one in the area that I live uh, for dressmaking particularly we've got some really gorgeous um, quilting fabric shops um, but yeah, I would still love to have my own fabric shop and to be able to host more, more, I haven't done any yet, but I'd really love to be able to host workshops and classes and get teachers to come and teach for me. Oh, there's so many ideas. There's so many ideas and I want to do it all. <laughs> right, I'm going to stitch these sides soon. So I am massively running out of time, um, both on my camera mm -hmm. battery and the fact that everything is still in pieces. <laughs> um, and I only have half an hour left before I have to go and um, relieve my mother-in-law from Mia and go to see Downton Abbey this evening. I was really hoping to wear this this evening, but um, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, um, so I had a bit of a disaster with my um, ties that I was planning to add. Um, I need to take them home and do them because my loop turner is at home and I've made them so narrow um, that my other method with the safety pin was never going to work. So I will take that home to get done. Um, I've also been on the phone for the last half an hour. <sighs> it's all go, go, go. And I'm not in again until it's Tuesday today. I'm not in again until Friday, and even that is just for a couple of hours. So, I'm going to have to um, stop soon. But I have got my um, pocket pieces and my skirt pieces all overlocked so I can attach the pockets to the skirt and hopefully get the skirt sewn up. Um, yeah, debating, do I take this home to carry on sewing at home or should I wait and do it with you guys? <sighs> oh, the things that I do to myself. <laughs> oh, squeaky things that I do to myself. Anyway, let's have another question. And hopefully the battery will keep going just a little bit longer. So, where are we? So I've had a few on Instagram now. 
Um, so, Solar T asked, how was it going back to work after Mia? I'm still at home with my baby and I'm excited to be working again, but also anxious about leaving him. I hear you, get you, definitely. It was a transition. I mean, because I, I didn't really have a traditional maternity leave because I run, obviously, my own business means that there isn't much um, ability to take six months or whatever off. I was still working whilst looking after Mia, but I kind of, we always knew we wanted a family, so when we, Andy and me, were discussing me doing this, it was kind of part of the appeal was that it was a monthly thing and I could do lots alongside having a baby so it would hopefully work with starting a family um, and for the most part it has done I'm just trying to figure out where my pockets are going I kind of took two months off coming into the studio and had worked from home whilst Mia slept or I mean obviously when she was that little she mostly slept and um, didn't really do very much else to be honest honest um so I was able to work while she was just sort of chilling out in the bassinet thing um and then had lovely my lovely family all around me to help out with um putting together the boxes which was awesome and some friends of my mum's all pitched in as well which was really nice everybody pitched in which was great and then I think Mia was about three or four months when I gradually started leaving her with my mum or Andy's mum who had both said that they would really like to help out and to look after Mia during the week whilst I worked. First time I left Mia with my mum I cried all the way to work. Um, my mum's a very practical person and she knew I'd be upset so she got Mia and she ushered me out the door <laughs> which was the right thing to do but I cried all the way to work saying, I didn't get to say goodbye properly, what if something happens and I never say goodbye? Um, and Andy did offer to turn around and come back, but I said, no, it was okay, otherwise I'd never leave. It's really tough. That first time is really, really hard. Um, but I'm proud that I did it. Um, and then gradually um, we did more and more, and I now get three days a week mostly in the studio um, so Mia has one day with my mum one day with Andy's mum and one day with a childminder as well who actually is a very good friend of mine um, who started her own childminding business which is really cool and um, yeah I definitely needed to do my own thing um, so it was it was right for me to go back to work um, and yeah I've managed to make it work whilst having Mia at the same time. That's not to say it's not really, really hard at times. Um, there are times where I wish I could spend more time with Mia, or there are times where I wish I could spend more time at work, on building the business. So, it swings and roundabouts. But yes, you'll be fine. It'll be tough, but you'll be fine, and good luck. Let me know how it goes. Right, I'm just pinning the last pocket and then I'll get that sewn up. My last pocket is where now? Where's it gone? There it is. Harriet Naomi, who I met, I was sat next to at the Dressmakers Ball earlier this year, asks, best book you've read this year and any autumn winter plans that you're dreaming of sewing up in time? So, I love reading, but I don't spend as much time as I would like to reading. I'm usually asleep after the first paragraph <laughs> but the last book I read that really got my attention was called While I Was Sleeping I think by I can't remember the name I'll find I'll find out and I'll link to it below um, I got yeah that book really got me gripped it's about a lady who is about to get married and is pregnant and then she is in an accident and falls into a coma for five years um, and obviously when she wakes up everything's different um, so and then yeah I won't give it all away I was gonna go into the whole plot but I won't it's really good that really gripped me the book I'm reading at the moment 
it's just not, I can't get into it. I'm really struggling, so I'm wondering whether I should just, I'm about halfway through, but it's just not doing it for me. So uh, the book before that that I really loved was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. I thought that was brilliant. Um, so always looking for book recommendations of that genre. That's the kind of genre I like. So I suppose chick lit, chick literature, but um, with twists. Yes, with twists. And in terms of my autumn winter sewing plans, um, so I've just made a couple of jumpers. I've made a cocoa jumper and a linden sweatshirt. Um, I really want to make a denim skirt. I've got the fabric for it and I would like to use the cashmere Ellis skirt pattern to make it. Um, I think that would be amazing because I love, um, you know, skirts or dresses with boots and tights in the winter and autumn so yeah and also a coat I have a piece of fabric that I bought two years ago to make a coat and it, it wasn't cheap fabric but it has been sat there for two years so I really really need to make it and then the final question comes from Anna Lee, lovely Anna Lee, who used to volunteer for me while she was on maternity leave. Um, asked how I was getting on with the food box that I had delivered because she needs some more everyday weeknight recipes. So I think in the last chatty video I did, I talked about that we had signed up to HelloFresh um, because I needed some new inspiration for food and stuff. And I loved it. We have stopped it now. Um, I think we did it for about three or four weeks um, and it was really good and it was really fun having new recipes to use and I have made a couple of them again since um, but I'm not sure if it was particularly cost effective and also there was a lot of packaging <laughs> that was the only problem because everything is portioned out for you meal by meal so everything there's like a little pot of um, herbs or a little sachet of enough sauce that you need, things like that. So, and you know, a bag of potatoes or three bags of potatoes if you've got potatoes in three meals, three individual bags of potatoes or carrots or whatever. So there was a lot of packaging and my bins started overfilling and obviously as everybody else I'm trying to cut down on the packaging. Um, I'm not very good at it but I knew that that didn't feel right. So a lot of um, plastic involved in that. Um, but I did really like it and it was great to sort of kickstart the inspiration. I mean, we're heading into autumn winter now, which is where I actually get quite more, a bit more excited about food and meals because I really love making things like stews and casseroles and pies and, you know, comforting winter food. Um, lasagna, I made a really lovely lasagna at the weekend. Gino De Campo's recipe for lasagna in his Italian Escapes book is the best lasagna recipe I've ever made. So there you go, there's a tip for you. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah, I enjoyed it, but we've stopped now. But I've still kept the recipe cards, so I'm hoping to go back and make some more of them. Anyway, that was the last question. I have to go and pick and get Mia and go and see Downton Abbey tonight. I am going to take this home and carry on with it because, I mean, this is already turning into a lengthy video as it is, but I've really enjoyed it and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, so I will finish it and, or carry on with it, and then next time I'm in I will try and do a bit more and finish off the video and show you the finished garment. But yeah, if I don't take it home, it's gonna, if I don't take it home, it's going to be another week before I can carry on with this. So, sorry guys, but I know you'll understand. <laughs> okay, so it's not completely finished yet. I still need to um, finish the seams around the waist and the sleeve seams. I haven't um, finished them with the overlocker or pressed them yet, but I need to go home soon to get um, Mia. And I also haven't hemmed, obviously, the sleeves or the skirt, but... I think I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. 
Um, I haven't got a mirror here. I really need to get a mirror here because I can't actually see. Um, so, yeah, excited to see how it looks. Interested to see if I like these sleeves. What do you think? Do you like the sleeves? I've also tied the tie at the front rather than the back because I feel like it brings it in just a little bit more if it's tied at the front and shows off the, the curves that I've got there rather than at the back. It's quite, again, same with the Juliet top, it's quite high neckline for me and I also need to see if I can fix, You can. I don't know if you can see it just sort of flips out there. Um, I did a twirl. Nearly finished. So yes, I will just hopefully quickly just overlock these seams and then I can take it home, press it and hem and it's all done. Yay, so thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to ask any more questions for the next Chatty Sewing video um, and I will see you all really soon. Bye.